Good morning and welcome to the Living Lighter show this morning. Today we're talking, isn't it time to lift the veils? Can't wait to get into this one. Good morning. And welcome to this strange thing called 2020. <laughs> well, 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 what a week it's been. Strange things happening. And on today's show, uh, what we're going to talk about is something a little bit different than what we've spoken about in the past. And uh, what I want to do is share some stories with you about what I believe is really going on and why. For you, for those of you on this show, it's so critically important that you are playing a part in this. And, uh, and as I've mentioned heaps of times this week to so many people, you've chosen this time to be here present. And all the work that you are doing on yourself and who you are um, is preparing you for this change we're going through. So it's no accident that you're here. There's no accident that you're going through this. And uh, as random as it can all seem, this is playing itself out. So just going to quickly check to see you can hear me this morning. Morning, uh, morning, Deborah. Good. Sound is good. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'll tell you, I had to edit that show. It took me hours last week. Uh, good morning, Louise. Lovely to have you here. I see my light workers are on, on this morning. How lovely. Um, yeah, so we're going to go through this, what's really going on, what's happening. And I'm, hopefully I can share a little bit of light for you. And, um, of course, at the end, we'll always end with that um, EFT session. And I want to share some stories about um, what happened this week for me. So um, as I mentioned in the preamble for the show, uh, Jerry and I have been on this uh, spiritual journey now since, you know, late 1979. Um, we had both lost um, very dear people in our lives in that year um, who passed away. And, and for some reason, some sliding doors moment, he and I were brought together. Um, and of course, we were on different countries. Um, we often still think back now that, that my friend Bill, who'd passed away, and Jerry's um, girlfriend, Patty, who'd passed away, actually were very significant in bringing us together. But at the time, uh, when I first met him, um, I had never spoken to anybody about um, sort of things that were going on in my mind about who we are and what we were. And I remember asking him, um, at, we were for dinner, I said, have you ever read the book, The Reincarnation of Peter Proud? And that just simply opened up the, the floodgates. So for the last 35, 40 years, we have been on this spiritual journey to try and understand um, who we are, our role in the world, um, asking questions. And what's really interesting about this particular stage, and we are right now, 2020, um, the, um, those who have, have been sort of involved in this spirituality um, gig for a while are talking about the change from the Piscean Age to the Aquarian Age. Now, remember the age of the Aquarius in 1960, you know, that song, and, and we all thought that that's what it was. You know, it's interesting, isn't it, when you think back to those times with, you know, caftans and leather sandals and Woodstock, all, all those people are in their 70s now. <laughs> And we were going to change the world. Remember that? I don't know if you, you know, we're probably not as old as as, as those of you on this call, but remember that that was the time and nothing happened. We all kind of went back to normal. Now, interestingly enough, the Piscean Age represents money and power and control. That's what the Piscean Age was all about. The Aquarian Age is a shift to unity and collaboration and communication and uh, brotherhood. Now, what's really interesting is... Um, you know, astrologers, those people sort of in this area are talking about that this is the time it's happening this year. It's the beginning of it. And can't you see it? Uh, like the the power and control and corruption um, is coming to an end. The veils are being lifted on that. And what's happening this year in particular, if you can see it, is how much community has started. People are reaching out to others. Um, we're, we're being very mindful of those who are on their own or those who are um, uh, um, uh, somehow disadvantaged in this time. I, I'm seeing 
let me know if you're seeing as well or feeling a lot more kind of community coming together. I guess in that lockdown, what we realise is how similar we all are and how we need that love and community and love. So that's that's from an astrological point of view, that's what's happening. It's actually a shift in time um, to what's becoming important. And as I mentioned early in uh, at the beginning, you are here right now to play this role. There's no accidents that you're here right now. Um, it's, it's accepting that and understanding that. I believe we choose when the time we were born, we choose whatever we need, to, lessons we need to learn, whatever life we're doing. And I honestly believe that we've chosen this time. Those of you on this call in particular have chosen this time to be here to because you're doing the inner work, you're doing the EFT, you're meditating, you're focusing, you're asking questions. And that's what's needed at the moment because the change that's happening um, can be, you know, a little bit overwhelming and, and it's actually necessary. It's the change we need. The, the, the structures that were in place before were simply unsustainable. You know, all the royal commissions we've had into um, sex abuse within institutions, uh, the Banking Royal Commission, um, the Aged Care Royal Commission that's you know, going to be coming, the Disability Royal Commission, those are just breaking down those old structures, those old paradigms that have been held in place for so long. And that's where the veils are being lifted, where we're, we're challenging people who have had this control for generations. You know, when I think back to, you know, I grew up Catholic and I think back to many of the boys, I, didn't, I went to an all-girls school and we had um, brother schools. And I wonder how many of those boys um, were sexually abused and didn't say we didn't talk about no one talked about it so they got away with it now this is changing and i believe that that's what this is happening and all about let me just grab and see who's on this morning um morning deborah deborah magella yes back to normal yes the way it should be yep 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 all right here we go let's go on to i wanted to talk about uh, just quickly uh, in stephen covey's book seven habits of highly effective people i'm actually doing a series of it on the, my um living lighter uh, my live live coaching programs at the moment on radio we, we're studying the seven habits and one of the things that, that stephen covey talks about all the time is circle of influence versus circle of concern our, our job in order to be effective is to focus on the circle of influence we can be very concerned about things that we have absolutely no control over. But what we do have control over is our circle of, of influence, who we can help. And, you know, I, I made a decision a little while ago to stay very focused on one particular aspect of what's going on rather than sort of trying to be concerned about everything, where my influence lies. So that's within my clients, my family uh, and, and friends. That's my circle of influence. And by me being present, honest with myself, uh, sharing my truth, that circle of influence is like a ripple effect because when you, when you are shining your light, when you are speaking your truth in that environment, that's like the ripple. But when you get stuck in this circle of concern and, and angry and stressed about things you can't fix, you lose that momentum and you lose your own power. So really and critical that you are staying focused on your circle of influence at the moment. Now, I believe that a lot of what's going on is about uh, control, keeping fe people fearful stressed and worried about the future when that happens you shift out of your circle of influence you shift out of your power um, and at the same time that rise in cortisol um, and inflammation in the body which happens when you are stressed and in fear or worry impacts on your immune system so it's really critical that you every time you fall you 
feel yourself falling into fear, stress and worry, that you lift back out and, and you know, using the mantra, I'm here right now for this change. This change is actually happening. It's it's happening because I've chosen to be here and, and this is what needs to happen. We need to break down these structures. Now, change is always messy. I don't think we realise how disjointed and messy. When, when we thought about this switch, you know, back in the 70s and 80s, it was all la-la land, um, I think I imagined in my mind this this change that we wanted was smooth and seamless. Well, change never is. You know, I talk about the five stages of change uh, in my uh, in my courses when I'm working with clients. You know, you go from hard to kind of bumpy and messy, which is where we are right now. Bumpy, messy, horrible, just get a grip on one thing, fall back onto the other. Then we move to this uh, untethered feeling where no one quite knows what's going to happen next before we finally reach that lighter, you know, that that feeling of being in control yet again and it's free and it's light. We're in the bumpy, messy stage at the moment of this change worldwide, but it's had to happen. Change can't happen seamlessly. It doesn't happen with you. Uh, uh, um, whenever we're going through change, it's bumpy, it's messy, it's horrible, it's challenging, it's, you know, it, it's fearful. And so you, if you're understanding that that fear, that, that fear or stress or worry is just keeping you small and impacting on your immune system. So that your job is not to fall into fear, but understand its origin. What, what's the origin of this fear I'm feeling? And, um, you know, you just have to watch what's going on this week in the news um, to see that people are angry and fearful and and controlling. And it's just it's just a really, really difficult time. But it requires the light workers, which I, you are all the light workers. You wouldn't be doing this in the work if you weren't. We are the wise ones. We it's our job now to step up. But you can't step up unless you deal with your own stuff. So when you're feeling fearful or stressed or worried is to go back and ask the question, what is the origin of this fear I'm feeling? What's the fear? What's the stress? What's the worry? Where can I connect it in the past? Because that, stre that stress is triggering something in you. Because if you know that this change is happening for a reason, we're shifting to a better place, a better way of doing things, then, then the way you deal with things, the, the way that you interact with others, the way you see it changes. You know, it's like when you have, you know, when your, your babies are learning to walk and, and they fall down and bump their heads so many times and it's so painful, And but you're not going to stop that you try and move things a little bit out of the way, but you're not going to stop them from walking. They're going to fall down and get hurt and get back up again. It's messy and bumpy and hard. And I can remember one day one of my kids had a bump so big on her head I thought she was going to burst through her skull. But you don't stop that because you know there's an outcome. So that's what this is all about. We can't stop this. It's already started and it's unfolding. Our job is to be present, just like as a mum watching that baby, you try and move things out of the way, but you've got to let them do this. That's what's going. But if you're in fear and you're in stress and, and you're not understanding your own triggers, then you can't be the guiding light for others. It's just impossible because the change we are in is the change we need. The, we, the, the, the old way of doing things is unsustainable for those of us who've been on a spiritual journey for this long time. This is the time we've been waiting for. And our job is to heal ourselves along the way. That's our job. It's not about pushing it out there. Because when you change, things change because change happens through you, not to you. When you understand true, pure sovereignty and you understand, you know, um, Dr. Joseph Spencer talks about all the time, that light resonance, that heart resonance, when you actually get that at a cellular level, you understand your role to play. 
change happens through you, not to you. I'm a better mother because of the inner work that I've done. I'm a better wife because of the inner work that I've done. I'm a better friend, sister, daughter because of the inner work I've done, not because of anybody else. And that reflects in the relationships that I have. That reflects in that. That's, but it's all about you because we are the change. And until and, and when, when the fear, worry, stress shows up, that's, that's what's stopping this. Okay, you have to kind of divorce yourself from what's happening out there and just stay inward and think about all the time, okay, what's my circle of influence? Where am I being triggered? What's showing up for me? Okay, so the thing is there's no shortcuts. Right. This pandemic is dividing people. And I said back in March, I mentioned it when I was uh, in, in the preamble to the show. I remember on a show in March, I said, I have a feeling that this pandemic is not going to divide people through race or colour or religion. It's actually going to divide people about what they believe. And, and that's dividing families too. And we can see it. I know a number of you on this call are struggling with that. There are, you know, here we are, thought we were bonded by family um, and that was strength and it's not happening in all cases. And the challenge is to stay true to yourself in this time because what you believe, think and say manifests. What you believe, think and say manifests. And I'm on and on and on and on and on with my clients continually stopping them using certain terminologies and changing it around because those words are so powerful they you will pull it in if you're fearful you will pull in something to be fearful about if you are uh, worried you'll pull in something to be worried about if you believe you're out of control there's nothing you can do that's exactly what you'll pull in that's the way it works it's the way our brain works the way our heart works that's exactly how it works so if you are fearful, worried, stressed, living in the future, concerned about things, you're going to pull in all that. That's exactly what you're going to see. However, if you don't, <laughs> if you choose otherwise, the truth shows up in one of three places, body, relationship, bank account. It shows up. It's a mirror. And, 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 and <laughs> those are the three places that don't lie. <laughs> your body, your relationship. Psst. bank account shows up doesn't lie you can pretend it's not there you can blame everything else you can say it's not, not me it's my hormones you can say it's not me uh you know times are bad you can say it's not me he's an idiot mm -mm -mm. it's your truth shows up in three places body relationship bank account. it's not up to somebody else to heal you make you happy your truth shows up in one of three places and or all three all you need to do is go to that place right figure out what's going on for me you know my body's in pain okay what's going on for you maybe i'm eating too much inflammatory foods why is that why do you not value your body my relationships are not happening okay what is it in you you believe that you can't manifest a good relationship What's your history from the past that has these same types of relationships showing up over and over again? <laughs> it's, it's you. <laughs> it's not them. And if the relationship isn't working, when are you ready to walk away from it? Are they hanging on to it? And your bank account, your business, your career. If you're in a place in your career you are not happy with, what are you going to do in your inner work to make you valuable to your organization if you've got somebody in your organization in your career that's bullying in you or, or, or making your life hell then what is it in you you need to heal what are they showing up to show you it's as simple as that because when you heal that that thing that issue with the body issue with your relationship issue with your bank account simply melts away now this week for me uh, and I think if you follow me on Insta stories, I actually tapped on, I don't know what day it is now, Wednesday or Thursday or something, two pages I wrote, two pages. Now, I've been doing this work for almost 40 years. I've been doing tapping for five years 
and I still hit something because remember we had the seven planetary um, planets in retrograde this week so stuff from the past was coming back up so it's just aspects to heal that's it that's aspects to heal now I want to quickly move into this you have a purpose your purpose is to fulfill it <laughs> you have a purpose that's what you're here for you have a purpose and guess what you do know it and many of you say I don't know my purpose yes you do you absolutely do it's your fear not feeling good enough that's standing in the way from you fulfilling it soul purpose remember that's those words that are the the adjectives the two usually begin with two to teach to inspire to uh, entertain to love to be with to heal to help Two, your life purpose is what you do with that and that changes as you change now, if, if if anybody here on this call doesn't understand their purpose I challenge you yes you do you know exactly what it is what's the fear hold why, why, why are you holding back from it you see because your only job is to be the light that's your only job to be the light and if you're blocking it then you're not stepping into your purpose it's it's why EFT and meditation journaling exercising are so critically important that's what it is because that's how you find it and it's only fear stuff from the past is standing in the way from you actually doing it. I can't honestly I, I it's I, it, I can't emphasize how important this is right now if you've put off really uncovering who you are if you've been holding back from stepping into it you are doing the world a disservice absolutely 100% you're doing your family a disservice. You're doing your uh, your uh, circle of influence a disservice because you're here right now to do this. It's what you're here for. And and that fear and that you know not feeling worthy and not feeling bad. It's just stuff. That's it. It's just stuff. It's not real. <laughs> it's a story. So if you, I'm going to go into a tapping session now. I'm just going to check all these comments coming in thank you for all the comments I'll have a look in a minute if you're stuck if you're ready and, and I'm actually not going to say are you ready I'm going to say please be ready <laughs> the world needs more people who think like us and the, the world needs more people right now who have the courage to let go of the fear to truly live their soul life purpose that's what this is all about you, it's and it's when you see people in such turmoil at the moment, you know, oh, sometimes you see on Facebook people posting, oh, my God, don't leave home. And oh, my God, we've got to stay locked down. I'm thinking, oh, for goodness sake, stop it. That is simply fear, fear driven narrative that they've fallen into. It's just fear. Look, do the right thing. Social distance. Put a mask on if you have to. I don't believe in those either. But do the right thing keep everybody happy but stay out of the fear you're not going to catch this thing you will if you believe it and that's just another story <laughs> okay I'm going to just quickly pop this in the comments I'm going to go to the comments now and have a look uh, I want to say hello and say hello to everybody and we're going to move into a tapping session where are we Debbie Magella bumpy and messy for sure yet today is a new day new door yep Debbie absolutely and that has to be every day um if you follow me on instagram i watch the sunrise every morning i love it absolutely it just exactly what you're just talking about debbie new day new dawn every day louise staying present and calm is my influence beautiful beautiful staying present and calm yeah absolutely that's what's so important yeah deborah you and i were talking the same language same language where is the narrative about health <laughs> where is you know so many doctors are saying we have other alternatives it's just where's the narrative about health in all of this fear 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 constant fear ridiculous morning l trish adamson hey sally how interesting currently coaching but kobe's principles too very needed aren't they yes absolutely trish is and i love if seven habits because they're so succinct um and of course the one i did this week was sharpen the saw boy is that ever real in this time right now to be looking after yourself 
Louise holding space in the eye of the storm, resonating from the heart. So true, Louise. Absolutely so true. And you can't do that unless you are absolutely holding space for yourself. And I know you, Louise, um, and a few others on this call um, are the, working in the field that you're working that, that we have to do the inner work consistently for ourselves, you know, in order to be present for the clients and the people that we work with. So, so critical. Um, and that's why, you know, I still tap, I still journal and surprise myself, surprise myself when I did uh, three pages of, oh, I couldn't, and I was still kind of walking around the house tapping. I was in the shower tapping because things were coming up. And when it finished, I thought, oh, good grief, there it is. It was such an old story that I hadn't just cleared that aspect. And yesterday was such a different, different day uh, as far as getting work done. Incredibly um, productive day yesterday. This stuff works. This stuff really works. Okay, who wants to do a tapping session? Just send me a little heart, will you? <laughs> We're going to do a tapping session uh, right now to finish off with. Again, uh, if you are really struggling and you, you know it's your time, reach out, let's have a chat quick strategy session and um, and let me see even how I can help you because as I said it, you know it's now everything we've been waiting for is happening right now and we're in the eye of the storm it's exactly what's happening it's exactly what's happening great thank you for the hearts we shall go into a tapping session <laughs> okay 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 here we go where are we um, 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 um. all right I'm gonna tap on fear of being judged if I speak my truth, I want you to just measure on a scale of one to ten if there's any fear or worry about being judged. Now, remember with all of this, these tapping ones we're doing are just very on the surface. The key is to get to underneath. What you need to look at is where in the past I've been judged, speaking up, speaking my truth, I've been laughed at you know, fear of, of, of being who you really are. You've got to find that because that's where the gold is. <laughs> Three pages later. <laughs> Here we go. Even though sometimes stepping out and speaking my truth is fearful, I deeply and completely accept myself and how I feel. Even though I may be criticised, what if I'm wrong? I deeply and completely accept myself and how I feel. Even though I slip so easily into stress and worry sometimes and it becomes quite hard. I deeply and completely accept myself and how I feel. Sometimes I slip into worry. This fear of speaking up, this fear of being judged. What if I'm wrong? This fear and worry. Sometimes it overwhelms me. I know what the truth is. But the fear and judgment sometimes is too much. This fear of judgment, this fear of actually speaking what I believe, Falling into that fear narrative. This fear of judgment. This fear of speaking up. What if I'm wrong? This fear of being criticised. This fear of being judged. Okay, take a deep breath and let it go. 
whatever stories come up for you, write them down, write them down, write them down, stay focused on this. Sometimes you might need a little bit of help, right? Get deep into it. That's where reach out for a strategy session if you need help. Okay. Now, remember, we don't normally move into a reframe until that's down to a zero or two, but I'm going to just quickly do this for you. Just create a little mantra for yourself. Even though sometimes I feel fearful and of being judged. I know this is the right time for me. Even though sometimes it's hard to hold the space and I can fall easily into fear, I choose to trust in my heart. Even though sometimes I lose sight of my purpose, I choose to keep that close. I choose to shine my light. I choose to impact my circle of influence. I choose to hold this space. I choose to trust in my intuition. I know I'm here for a purpose. I'm ready to release all that fear of judgment. I choose to honour my purpose and my reason for being here. I choose to honour my purpose. Okay, just take a deep breath and let it go. Let me know if there's anything that's come up for you. Thank you for all the lovely hearts. Let me know how you go this week. Be very, very mindful. And the seven, I'm looking at my calendar, that's why I'm looking over there. I believe the seven planets in retrograde are sort of slowly coming out. It may not be as intense this week. But be mindful and ask yourself, you know, what, what is my purpose for being here? Am I ready to step into this? Because if you're not now, when? We're in it. <laughs> We're in it. <laughs> so no more time, people. There's no more time. We're in it. This is where you need to be doing this right now. And stop waiting for the right time. The right time is right now. Be ready for the time right. Thank you, Louise. So needed right now. I thank you, thank you, thank you. I know I needed it this week too. Oh, you're welcome, Debbie. Welcome, Debbie. Thanks, Trish. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day, everybody. And as I said, be the light this week. Be the light this week. It's time to lift the veils. You are here for a purpose. You have a role to play. Stop playing small. Stop playing small. You're welcome, Elle. Have a wonderful week, everybody. Bye for now.